And it's actually not about the story, it's about our response and how critical it is for you to stop being mean to yourselves. Joan, remember when we were in California, we were at a Mindshare event that JJ Virgin was leading and uh, there was the speakers on stage for five minute presentations. And um, one of the speakers, one of the um, uh, presenters like totally dissed me and my product as um, uh, ineffective for her. And so I was sitting there with you and all of a sudden like, you know, it just, I did, I did, I felt like, I felt embarrassed, shamed, attacked. And you said, you walk me through that situation again. <laughs> I was like, I'm, you asked me, I'm, I said, I'm feeling attacked. And you said, don't go there. Well, I think what I, what the reason I said that is because it attacked, put, the notion of being attacked put you immediately in a victim stance. Ah, that's it. Right. Yep. And, 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 and I didn't want you to take that position and that, and that if you were, um, I, I'm trying to remember the exact specifics around it, but I mean, I remember that I do remember all of that incident happening. I, I'm just trying to remember the very specifics of what I said. I know I would have said that, that, that I didn't, that that would have put you in the position of being a victim. And what I would wanted you to do is instead to handle it from the experience of you being self-empowered. Yes. <clears throat> so that so that rather than being victimized, you could have a reaction of, you know what, that was, the, I'm angry about that, that she did that. I've done nothing wrong. The product's a great product. You know, what was the appropriateness of her saying what she said, right? And, and a variety of things like that that could help you kind of uh, be in the experience, feel the embarrassment, but no shame, mm -hmm. right? Shame becomes kind of the judgment part of embarrassment, right? <clears throat> there is really a quality of judgment to to shame and and to then just go all right I'm, I'm embarrassed but but this is something she did it's not what i did right mm -hmm. so it was walking you through a variety of of those kind of if you will bodily sensation waves and probably and also helping you reframe the situation Yes. And I think reframing was really powerful. You were asking, okay, where, what are you feeling in your body right now? And that was focusing back right into my body, right out of like, essentially out of my head where it was going. And I see that connection between shame and judgment. And that's really a powerful connection. And I think a lot of times as women, we can deal with that in so many situations. And so recognizing that there's judgment with that, and we never want to judge, right? So that we can let that, let that go. So being brought back into my body, like, okay, where are you feeling this? What are you feeling right now? Like where in your body are you feeling this? And that was, um, that was powerful. I was like, I was like feeling it in my heart, like my chest. Like I was like, wait, you know, I feel, you know, I definitely felt a physical manifestation. You're like, just breathe. Exactly. <laughs> so it was a, like, you know, just go into breathing and just focusing, you know, separating her, you know, that her, you know, uh, her part from right. me and that separating, not allowing myself to be in the victim mode and right. to feel empowered. Say, okay, well, that's, you know, she should have asked me. I would have t told her how to use it correctly. I mean, what was the situation? Right. There's got to be a, another, right? There's another situation here, or mm -hmm. there's there's some maybe you know, is there um, a reason for you know, I mean, and not even trying to get into that person's head to say, well, why would she even say something? Right, right. And the point at which you try to do that, you're actually out of your own experience. Yeah. Now, now what? And, and mo many people do this that they try, they end up trying to, to figure out why someone would do something, but now you're making up a story, yeah. right? And it's actually not about the story, it's about our response. And it's, and it's how we handle our response. So whether it's, it, whether it's being able to just kind of, at, to your point, get, get back in touch with your body and go, all right, what, wait a minute, what is it that I'm really experiencing about this? What is my emotional reaction to it? And then, What's my reasoned reaction to it, right? So that you can actually have both reactions going. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, was that really appropriate for her to do? No, uh-uh, not clean. Wasn't, that was kind of a shot below the belt. Didn't feel good. 
but I, my, I know my product is good. I know a lot of people are satisfied. So then it's starting to use your reason then with your emotional response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Can you give us another, another example of, and walk us through how we do that in the heat of the moment? Let me go the relationship route because that's uh, the temptation in, especially in conflict is, and I can actually go the other direction too, but the, the temptation in conflict is to start to escalate and to get uglier and more intense and meaner and crueler and all those kinds of things, right? And, and the key here is, is holding, it, yeah, my thing around um, <clears throat> using both parts of our, our beingness, if you will, is, is that holding, I, actually I would say three things, holding values in terms of how I want to show up, so if my value in a relationship to be uh, is to show up as a kind person, then I want to I want to see if I can express myself through that kindness, even if I'm upset. So now I'm in the heat of conflict, and I'm aware I'm getting angry and more upset about something. Mm -hmm. But if I'm living through kindness, then it's going to be then I'm going to I'm going to take a breath before I'm going to respond. So let's say I can feel stuff escalating in me and I know I don't want to be mean. I know I don't want to say things that I'm going to regret later. I know I don't want to be hurtful because I actually love this person, even if I'm angry in the moment. So it's understanding that I can have angry feelings and be loving too simultaneously. And, yeah, that's and a trick. Well, it's a, that, that's, a, that's actually a growth move for all of us, mm -hmm. is to be able to hold the, the, health, the healthiest of us, <laughs> believe it or not, are, we, we work towards being able to do that. It's, it's, and that's, that might be a daily practice, right? <laughs> daily practice of, of doing, doing the combo of working towards being angry and loving too, or loving and angry too, to where there's pleasant and unpleasant simultaneously uh, as opposed to just seeing someone as all bad or all good mm -hmm. and and so it so then it would be all right let me take some deep breaths before i respond i'm going to ride the waves of this intensity of what i'm what i'm experiencing and right, and my thing is, reaction the physiologic yeah, reaction absolutely absolutely and especially when people are angry <clears throat> i i always say you never speak when you're on the upside of the wave, right? In fact, you keep your mouth shut intentionally. Yeah, that's a challenge. Whew, yeah, so that's one. <clears throat> you breathe, you breathe up. You don't get to talk until you're on the downside of the wave. Because that's going to give you just enough time to re-engage your thinking. Mm. As opposed to just letting the feelings be run out of your mouth and to run off, right? And, and so my thing is you, you take, if you're feeling the intensity of something, you take a deep breath. In fact, I think the, I now think of the breath as the, probably the, if you think about riding the wave, then the breath is like the boat you're taking to the shore. Mm, I like that. So you actually ride the feelings on the breath. So, so now, you're, now you're in the heat of the moment, you take a deep breath, you know, you're excited. You, you want to say stuff, you take a deep breath, you ride the feeling, you feel the intensity start to go down. And then what you do in a softer voice, because now you can respond as opposed to react, you say, you know what, that made me really angry. Or, whoa, that, that what you just said to me, that really hurt. Mm -hmm. or, or what you're saying to me right now, with behavior, the way you're behaving, totally unacceptable. Um, but it's not about attacking the other person. It's about being clear about what your experience is. And that's a huge, a huge difference, a huge shift from, you know, just being clear. This is what, this is how I, I've been made. This is how I'm feeling right now. Or this is what, you know, is coming up in me. Because right. Of the situation. And, you know, just yesterday, actually, because I've been practicing your 90 seconds to a life you love now since your book came out a couple of years ago. We've been trying to get on the couch yeah. together here for a long time, Joan. Yeah, we I have know. Been, it's been a long time, but I, it's come in very handy. And I'll give you another personal situation. So, you know, on one of my dates, a well, date that I had last night, 
um, he was a lovely, like just, I was saying, I've met some amazing, amazing men and uh, just, he's an incredible man. And he was talking about this uh, past relationship that he had. And I started feeling in myself some vulnerability. I felt a little bit like insecure and all the stuff came up and I said, no, you know, hold safe space breathe, recognize that I'm feeling these things. It's not about me. He's not like comparing me or whatever it may be in my head. I was putting myself down, like talking, my, you know, and I was like, okay, 90 seconds. Focus on, you know, just uh, shifting my focus to be in this loving, kind space and not judging myself or the situation and not definitely, you know, recognizing that this, this was, I mean, I've been doing this for a couple of years now and it's still like those feelings come up, those insecurities come up and you're like, you know, and, um, and that's fascinating. Another thought I had on the way back today, thinking about, um, uh, uh, a, you know, a, a date and, um, thinking, well, you know, the thought came up, okay, we didn't um, have a second day. Like, well, was I not attractive enough? I'm like, you know, get that thought right out of your mind. It's not a situation here because, you know, fo retraining my brain, okay, focusing on the situation, that's insecurity coming up, you know, not about me. Let's, you know, focus on um, the positive feelings and shift that train of thought into sexy, attractive, confident you know like let that separate actually that can emotion. i can i jump in on that one yeah cuz cuz that one is uh, uh, there's a lot of things that are important to me um <clears throat> in the work that that's now out there in terms of the book but harsh self criticism is like you want to hear me on a soapbox for a few hours i want to I, so i want to jump on this for a second cuz cuz because what you're doing, <clears throat> so you had a great day, guy didn't call back, and now now you're into hard self criticism. Yes. What what what, 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 what you insecure, uh, and and because that's not a feeling in my mind. That's inadequacy. That's not a feeling in my mind. Those are judgments. So anywhere there's an evaluation, anywhere there's a judgment, there's hard self criticism. Anyway, anywhere there's harsh self-criticism, there's distraction from unpleasant feelings. Ah, okay. So I look at harsh self-criticism as a thought hijack of unpleasant feelings. So rather than going, doggone it, to be kind, <laughs> or damn, I really had a great time with this guy. How come he didn't call me back? I'm so disappointed there's the feeling mm -hmm. it went to what am i not pretty enough not this enough not that enough not what right and so the shift is away we're in charge of what we think we're not in charge of what we feel we manage what we feel once it's in our conscious awareness so you were disappointed but just that quickly, it turns into hard self-criticism. Very well trained in that, apparently. Well, I, I think most of us are. And, and the reason I'm jumping on it, uh, especially for women, Anna, is because of how absolutely destructive or damaging or toxic or you name it, I think it is. And people get confused. People think that harsh self-criticism equals unpleasant feelings mm -hmm. let me reassure you they are not equal they're not anywhere near equal harsh self-criticism takes you down like this you know go 70 go 70 floors in an elevator fast right below absolutely yes that's that's Thank how quickly you know that's how quickly you're taking yourself down and it's unbelievably toxic to our immune system and you're a fan of the immune system right yeah so, so it's, not, it's not that if we go into self-criticism that it actually is equal. We just feel bad and or it's about the same equivalence feeling bad as when we're in unpleasant feelings. Oh, no, it's way worse, significantly worse. So the thing that I really want listeners to understand is that, is that you, this, you have to put a stop to hard self-criticism. And, and 
and the moment and the moment you find yourself there the thing to do is to go all right what one unpleasant feeling what occurred just before i went to the criticism and again let me give you another very quick example is doing an interview the interviewer um i i could hear him he could not hear me fumbling looking all over the computer crawling underneath the desk pulling cords i mean <clears throat> you can get the picture, right? Oh, yeah. Three or four minutes are going by, and it's still like this. And then I, I hear him say, I'm so embarrassed. And then without missing a beat, it turned into, I'm so stupid, I'm such an idiot. Mm. Now, the I'm so stupid, I'm such an idiot is the thought hijack. Our criticism. Yeah, it's the thought hijack of the embarrassment. Mm -hmm. But that's how quickly it happens for all of us. Okay. And so when it happens and, and are we able to disconnect from that? Like, are, are you able to not go into that stage of harsh self-criticism? Is it just like that step? You feel like you're about to cross that threshold and you just back into what am I feeling? This is a feeling of disappointment. This is exactly, exactly that you just you reverse course. And that's the big question. Well, what was, what was harder for me? And if you want to, you can, what was harder for me to bear, know, or feel? To bear? B-E-A-R, bear, know, or feel. Yeah, you just, bet, you just go in reverse just to figure that out. What happened just prior to that? And I will tell you when I'm working with people, if I hear this thread of harsh self-criticism, that's frequently the first thing that I insist that we work on. That's how damaging and toxic it is. I have somebody right now that I'm working with that I've probably been working with about six months. So, um, and she's gotten three to seven days worth of just really trashing herself down to two hours, maybe at best. And, and is very mindful of now when she starts to go down that course, because now going down that course is choiceful, right? It's, it's more in her awareness and, and that you can think of the relief that that's provided her. If going, just breaking that pattern. So I, and I just, I want to emphasize this because of how destructive it is. And, and there's no way I want to play it down. I actually want to play up the importance of how critical it is for you to stop being mean to yourselves. Oh my goodness. That is, that is something that is I mean, so powerful. And thank you for bringing that up and just really making a point of this because, you know, as, as trained as, you know, we can feel like where we are, that harsh, that nasty bitch can still show up on your shoulder. Right. I mean, that's like, gosh, get that nasty bitch off your shoulder. That's what I tell my clients. I'm like, that is, that it's, it's just true. And then we can actually do it to ourselves and we would never want our, our child or best friend to I, say things like that about themselves or to believe things like that about themselves. So saying, being able to even be our own best coach, right? At I, first, learn these skills and then share it with those around us thinking, you know, right now of my daughter, when, um, she has, you know, a, um, you know, just being critical of her, her barrel racing right now. It's just like, uh, you know, struggling with some of that. And now I can identify that as harsh self-criticism and, you know, Joan just being able to say, okay, well, really, what are you feeling? And then like, then what do you do? Like what's, what's your, your next step or when you're well, dealing with that? Well, the next step is actually then ride the wave. Ride right? the wave. Ride the wave. And the beauty of it, so here's the beauty of it, Anna. So, and, and so it's breathing. So, you, you, so now you're aware that you're into hard self-criticism. <clears throat> you step back from that and you go, all right, what was really going on? Oh, so if we use your example, you were disappointed. Guy didn't call back. All right, so now, now I'm in the disappointment. Again, it's not languishing there, it's right? It's not, it's, it's not getting caught up in that. But it's like, oh, bummer, I, I'm just disappointed. That seemed like it had possibilities to it, right? So you, now you're riding the wave, and, and, then, and then if you stay present to the feeling, my experience is that you start to gain insights. So it's like, oh, well, you know, what was it that kind of captured my attention about him in the first place? And then let, let's say you pause and you reflect a little bit on that. Or, or what, what was it about this that kind of triggered me in this way? You know, so, 
so that you, uh, was there any pattern to my reaction? So, so now once you're breathing and you're pausing and reflecting, you're starting to gain insights and you go, oh, wait a minute. He was actually just like that other guy I dated that was actually kind of manipulative in the end. There's an aspect, maybe there's an aspect of that behavior that it turns out might not be so good for me after all. Or who knows what you'll come up with, right? Oh yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> so, so that, but then you gain insights and then those insights are available for making decisions, expressing yourself or taking action. So when you stay present to the feeling, then you gather actually much more information that along with reasoning, you can, you can then use the emotional information for something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then gaining that insight. So also breaking from what it sounds like, just breaking from old patterns of behavior, right. Right. old patterns that haven't served us and becoming free from those. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love this conversation. And Joan, again, thanks for that, you know, focus on the harsh self-criticism. I think for our audience, you know, we have, you know, always there's another, another thing to learn. And this practice of our 90 seconds to life you love. Um, Joan, you have a copy of your book right there. I want to just uh, let people know where to get your amazing book and to um, find you. They can find me easiest, drjoanrosenberg.com. And they, or if they punch in my name, there's all sorts of, there's two TED Talks that are out there. I'm on social media. They can find me on Instagram and on Twitter and those kinds of places as well. Uh, and uh, let's see what, and the book can actually be purchased anywhere. So I believe, I believe it's, certainly I know it's uh, Amazon. I know it's at Barnes and Noble and Books A Million. And so wherever people buy books, I would say, um, go buy many of them. <laughs> yes, drjoanrosenberg.com. And also yeah, that website, your website is a great resource for people. And we'll have links in our show notes and more information on, on, on your site and where to get your books. We'll put links in there for everything. So awesome. I want to thank you so much. On, and final words for us as we're, you know, just now this has been for me an emotional conversation. I'm like, okay, 90 seconds. <laughs> Let me ride the wave some more, Joan. I'm riding the wave some more. You know what? I wanna, I wanna take, I wanna take your your opportunity here, um, and I wanna add one other piece. Yes. Uh, and that has to do. I'm gonna do the flip side of the coin of our self criticism. Okay. And that is the importance of taking in compliments. Because as as good as people, as good as women are in particular at leveling our self criticism right? They're um, just as bad at, at accepting compliments. But I want you to put these two things together because if you engage in a lot of harsh self-criticism and you refuse to accept compliments and really absorb them, then there's no place for good to come in. Mm -hmm. and, and I know women get caught in this imposter syndrome as an example. Well, that's, both of those are operating, right? There's, there's only bad that's being directed towards the self and there's no good coming in. So, so how can, and so I really want to emphasize those two things. One is how important it is again, to put a stop to the, to the harsh self-criticism. And I will also emphasize how e equally important it is for you to start to absorb the goodness that's directed towards you. Compliments are a reflection of you back to you. Mm -hmm. So they're not coming out of the blue. They're actually somebody holding a mirror up to you and saying, this is how I experience you. This is how I see you. So it's an experience of you or it's an experience with you. And, and it's super important to absorb that. And when you do that, you start to up-level your own sense of self and self-image. So I just, I couldn't resist also adding that one piece in. I am so glad because that is so important. And it's a, been a practice to learn too, when receiving a compliment, to receive it and not knee-jerk react to give one back. Just receive it and accept it and 
And that is a, you know, a feminine trait too, just to receive that compliment. And I like how you said, absorb it to really let it, let it. You take it, you, you uh, metabolize it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, again, I do, I do, there are certain things that I think really change us. And, and, uh, you know, speaking up would be one, taking in compliments would be another. And, and that it's just super important to, for us to do that and not to play it down and devalue it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and definitely can do better in, in both those areas too. All right, you've put me up with a challenge. So really working on, on up-leveling this process, the right. recognizing right. that habit of the harsh self-criticism where that's coming into play, right. stepping back, engaging into the feelings. Where is this coming from? What, where am I feeling it? How am I feeling it? And differentiating. And then also that self compliments and receiving compliments from others. And then also giving heartfelt compliments to those oh, around. And I, yeah. yeah, yeah. So thank you, Joan. Thanks so much for being here. And I want to thank all of you in the in our community, in our Girlfriend Doctor Club, in our community, at our Keto Green community on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you are. I am just grateful for you guys to be in this community. Please be sure to click on this video and share it with your friends. Give us your feedback. Write down in the comments below what you're committing to based on what you've learned today. What is a um, practice that you're going to uh, focus on or to practice moving forward from our conversation today with Dr. Joan Rosenberg. You guys, and find her, pick up her book, 90 Seconds to a Life You Love. There's pearls, gems. I mean, it really, it is a masterpiece. It is a essential read. And I'm going to go back and read it again because it's been a couple <laughs> years. <laughs> I have to read it again. And so, um, and then you can find her at drjoanrosenberg.com. So I look forward to seeing you guys. Be sure to share this episode and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and get those notifications and comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you loved and what your action step is.